The Holy Gospel for this Sunday comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus is speaking. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. Son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of our Lord. In the name of the God who loves us all, grace to you in peace. Let me begin by introducing myself. My name is Pastor Doug Rebley, and it is my privilege to serve as assistant to the Bishop of the Eastern Synod of our Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. It is also my privilege to deliver this week's version of the ELC Summer Sermon Series. So without further ado, here's a sermon. I want to begin with a question or two. What I will call questions for the average person. That's you and me. Though to be honest, as children of God, we are much more than average. We are beloved. First question, which is more important, making money or being devoted to your family? Ask most people that question and virtually everyone will answer family without hesitation. But watch how many people often live their lives. See where we really invest time and energy, and we will give away the fact that we do not always live by what we say we believe. We have become persuaded, and I notice I use the word we, I'm a part of this. We have become persuaded that if we leave for work earlier in the morning and come home tired at night, we are proving how we devoted we are to our family by expanding all that time and effort to provide with, for them all the things they need or want. Now, yes, maybe simplistic, but I wonder. An ancient story is told of a king who was suffering from a certain ailment and who was advised by his astrologer that he would be cured if the shirt of a contented man were brought to him to wear. So people went to all parts of the kingdom looking for such a person. And after a long search, they found a pert man who was really happy. But he did not possess a shirt. There's another question. Which means more? The approval of strangers or the affection of people closest to you? The average person, you and me, which means more, and we will not be able to understand why we would, why someone would ask such a dumb question. Obviously, nothing means more to us than the affection of our family and closest friends. And how often, I'm looking at myself, I think, how often have we embarrassed our children or squelched their spontaneity for fear of what neighbors or strangers might think? How often have we poured out our anger or displeasure on those closest to us because we had a hard day at work or someone else did something to upset us? A little more humorous example, 
though with some truth, how many of us have let ourselves become irritable with our families because we are dieting to make ourselves look more attractive to people who do not, not know us well enough to see beyond appearances. One more question. What does the average person want out of life? What do you want? Many will reply, all I want is to be happy. You know what? I believe that. I believe that most people want to be happy. I believe that we work hard at making ourselves happy. We buy books, attend classes, change our lifestyles, in an ongoing effort to find that elusive quality happiness. In spite of all that, I suspect that many people much of the time do not feel all that happy. As Henry David Thoreau said over 150 years ago, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. Oscar Wilde wrote a few years after Thoreau, in this world there are only two tragedies. One is not getting what one wants, and the other is getting it. He was trying to warn us that no matter how hard we work at being successful, success will not satisfy us. By the time we get there, having sacrificed so much on the altar of being successful, we will realize that success is not what we want. Trust me, I'm going somewhere with all of this. Most of you will know those Chicken Soup for the Soul book. They, well, they make for good reading when you're sitting in a doctor's office or something somewhere in the house. So here's a story I pulled out of one many years ago. Keep it in my sermon file. Supposedly a, 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 a friar in a monastery wrote this. I have no idea if that's true, but I, I, he had a point what he wrote. This is what he says. If I had to live my life over again, I'd try to make more mistakes next time. I would relax. I would limber up. I would be sillier than I've been. I know a very few things I would take seriously. I would take more trips, climb more mountains, swim more rivers, watch more sunsets. I would do more walking and looking. I would eat more ice cream, less beans. I would have more actual troubles and fewer imaginary ones. You see, I'm one of those people who have lived sensibly, hour after hour, day after day. I've had my moments. If I had to do it over again, I would have more of them. In fact, I try to have nothing else, just moments, one after another, instead of, instead of living so many years ahead each day. I've been one of those people who don't go anywhere without a thermometer, a hot water bottle, a gargle, a raincoat, an aspirin. If I had to do it over again, I would go places, do things, and travel lighter than I have. If I had to do my life over again, I would stay barefooted earlier in the spring, start barefooted earlier in the spring, and stay barefooted later in the fall. I wouldn't have made such good grades except by accident. I would ride more merry-go-rounds and pick more daisies. Friends, if you ask the average person, if you had to live your life over again, what would you do differently? What do you think they would say? What would you say? What I say, you can see from the color of my hair, I'm at an age where I ask myself that sometimes. What would I have done differently? 
But now you've figured out this is not a biblical exegetical sermon. I'll leave that for the bishops in the summer series. They're very smart. They can do all that work. So here's one more vignette to reflect on, and then I will let Jesus have the last word. It's an old Peanuts cartoon. Snoopy is sitting on top of his dark house. And Charlie Brown comes in with a note. Charlie says, it's a letter from your brother, Spike. Remember Spike? Dear Snoopy, something wonderful happened. A man came by here and offered to sell me a magic cape. He told me that if I wore this magic cape, I would be transported to a land of paradise. He said the cape was on sale, so wanting not to miss such a bargain, I gave him my only dollar. The next panel shows Spike spending his time in the desert contemplating the meaning of life. Then we switch back to Charlie reading to Snoopy. So by the time you get this letter, I'll be in paradise. And Spike is pictured again on the desert floor among the cacti, cape draped over his shoulder saying, then again, maybe I've been happy. Dear friends in Christ, in this life that we live, too many people have been had at times. I know I have. There are no magic capes. There is no one key that will guarantee happiness. In fact, that old saying about death and taxes being the only things we can count on would seem to ensure unhappiness. As the average person, and you will hear that we lived in a messed up world, a world where people fly planes into buildings, where adults do sometimes unspeakable things to children, a world where unspeakable horrors occur every day all over the in our own country, in our own communities. We all know we are living in difficult times. There will always be low times. In fact, there will be times you get so far down that you cannot remember up. When those times come, remember this. You are not alone. Got a friend, one whom scripture says sticks closer than a brother. Jesus, who we call the Christ. The same Jesus who issues an invitation in today's gospel meeting. An invitation that reaches, reaches down to us no matter how deep, how low we are. This is what Jesus says. Come to me. All you that are weary, all who are carrying heavy burdens, guilt, pain, despair, all that keeps you from being happy, come and I will give you rest. In the name of the God who loves us all. Amen.